Watch this video with our virtual reality glasses for a smartphone. Virtualvisor.com. Well, we're here to talk about Qualcomm's new announcement, the Snapdragon VR headset. The Snapdragon 820 processor is embedded in here. You know the 820 processor from many smartphones, smartphones like the Galaxy S7. Many of the premium smartphones that are out there today are based on Snapdragon 820. The 820 was actually designed with VR in mind. Uh, and I say that there are actually features built into the VR, into the Snapdragon 820 to ensure features that are important in VR. Things like motion to photon latency, that is the delay between when I turn my head and when I actually see the screen update to reflect that. We're 18 milliseconds or less on our motion to photon latency. This is critical for a comfortable viewing experience. If you have a slower motion to photon latency, it can be a little bit uncomfortable for people. Uh, so that is important. A couple of the features about this device, it has four cameras. Uh, the first two cameras are inside the device that are looking at your eyes for eye tracking. Okay? And eye tracking, as we talked about, is important for foveated rendering and other UI experiences. The two cameras on the front of the device, they're not stereo cameras, they're two different cameras. One of them is for look through applications. So if I want to do mixed reality or augmented reality, yeah. I can use that one camera for that. I can see my hands in front of me. If I want to do gesture recognition or what have you, that's fine. The second one is for six degrees of freedom. Now, six degrees of freedom, the ability to not only detect rotation about X, Y, and Z axes, but movement between the X and Y. So that's and positional Z. tracking. Positional wow. tracking, in addition. But we're only doing it with mm. one camera, and we do it without any lighthouses, without any beacons, without any calibration. So is there a kind uh, of slamming behind? Slam algorithm? It's similar to slam, but technically the algorithm is called visual inertial odometry. We developed it for drones. Yeah. So, so a drone, when it's flying indoors, when there's no GPS, needs to know where it's going, needs to know how to navigate, how to avoid obstacles. But it's going to do it very, very fast because yes. when the drone is moving at high speed, you know, you don't have a whole lot of time to react. So the visual inertial odometry here is doing the same thing. It's taking multiple images of an image of a of the scene, 800 times per second, and comparing one to the other to yes. determine where objects are relative to it. So like, so like a kind of motion. Uh, detection also. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, so just the way the drone flies by visual inertial odometry, we keep track of where the headset is by blending the accelerometer inputs that you normally yeah. use for three degrees of freedom with what the camera is seeing. Yeah. And that gives us a very high accuracy, six degrees of freedom without any additional beacons, without any additional calibration. This is important because we believe for, for VR to be mass market, it has to be couch compatible. That is, it has yes. to be in the living room. It has to be wireless. It has to be where entertainment is consumed, that's the living room. Yes. You know, for most people, the barrier to entry of a high-end gaming PC and a tethered VR headset, it's going to be a limiting factor for wide adoption of VR. But something like this, it doesn't need my hand, doesn't need my handset to slot into it, it doesn't need to be attached to a PC, it doesn't have any fans or anything in it because it's a low power, it's all based on Qualcomm's mobile technology. That's going to generate a new generation of mass market devices with full features but wireless and living in the living room where entertainment is consumed. Wow, amazing. I'm speechless. <laughs> are you a magician or what, what are you what's your job? It's unbelievable. <laughs> no, I'm just the marketing guy. Yeah, okay. <laughs> You're doing a very good job. Thank you. So um, how precise are the tracking sensors compared to the HTC Vive? Now, the HTC Vive with the dual scanning lasers uh, uses a TD or time delay methodology. Right. It's quite accurate, yeah. uh, no doubt about it. But if you're a fan, you know, I, I'm married. My wife, she's never going to let me put those beacons uh, in the living room, the lighthouse. It's not going to happen. And they're wired, and there's additional costs there as well. So when I do this, I don't actually have a number for accuracy on VIO for this device. This is relatively new. I do know with our Snapdragon flight uh, yes. uh, mm. platform here that if I take this drone out and I fly it around for one kilometer in distance, I'll be within one meter when I come back to where I started from. And if you think about VIO is always incremental. Yes, I mean, it's, yes, it's, it's always it's integrating, a delta integrating movement. Of, yeah, yes. it's a constant delta. So mm. that's pretty good. Now, in the case of, of in your living room, you're never really going to move that much. So mm. I suspect the repeatability for the living room is quite good, uh, but I haven't measured it yet. So I don't mm. have a, a real a magic number for it. Mm -hmm. I see. So the special thing about it is positional tracking without any additional devices. So, certainly that's so one inside of the key out positional tracking. Inside out, you have positional tracking, you have a, a 
relatively high resolution screen. It's 2880 by 1440. So you get 1440 by 1440 per eye hmm. uh, at 70 Which hertz. Which is better than the, even the Oculus uh, Rift yeah. CV1 yeah. or HTC Vive. You know, in the, in the case of VR, you cannot have enough, right? It would be even more would be better. Yes, uh, sure. We have a 70 hertz refresh rate on the screen in here. Okay. Our hardware will go up to 90 pretty easily, but we can't find a 90 hertz screen today. So we, yes. we would like to, uh, oh. <laughs> if we can get there. At least not at that, at that resolution. Yeah. Yeah. We also have full support for positional audio. Uh, okay. So not surround sound, if you think about surround sound, actually that's an easier problem to solve because yes. it's all relative to your TV screen. Your TV yes. screen doesn't move. Yes. Uh, but when you have positional audio in VR, the audio has to move as well as what the content on the screen. And maybe they're moving in the opposite direction, yeah. right? The dragon flies behind me, I need to hear it back here. Uh, yep. So. Full support for positional audio. It has four microphones on it uh, okay. because we need to have a. You know, when you're in VR, it can be a very insulated, uh, solitary experience. But most gaming has become quite social. Uh, if I need to speak to my gaming league or my teammates or anybody, I want to have the ability to have a voice interaction. Incorporate. Yeah, yeah. And I need to have uh, echo cancellation. I need a, robot, a good quality voice signal, not mm -hmm. you know, yelling from the back of the room. So, so you have a kind of a, a, a microphone array to, to also measure the, the direction of the, uh, well, the uh, sound comes you know, the, from? There are four like these beacons of the Kinect, you know, that we have. Yeah, there's, uh, there's four microphones. You can see one on the side here. There's, there's two underneath. Yeah. There's one on the other side. Oh. And in that way, you can do echo cancellation to eliminate the, ambient, the echo and the ambient sounds around you. And will this positional tracking be available in regular smartphones too soon? Unlikely, because mm. a smartphone, that's one of the challenges why I think a standalone device like this rather than a slot in will become a longer term uh, the, the way that people want to consume VR. Mm. Your smartphone has different design criteria associated with it. A smartphone has to fit in your pocket. The cameras in a smartphone are designed for a different purpose. Mm. The cameras in a smartphone have to have, you know, the ability to handle very bright uh, range of lights, very low light situations. They are probably using phase detect for focusing or time of flight sensors for focus. Uh, it's, a, it's a different equation, and that's why having standalone gives us lots more capabilities. We, for instance, even with the same processor, we don't need a fan. We can have run a little bit higher because we have more room. Mm. We have vents along the top here. Yeah. We have some airflow naturally. So yeah, I don't want to have a fan on in here or anything like that. That would be terrible. Mm. Mm. And when will it be available? To our OEM partners and to software developers, it'll be in the fourth quarter of this year, so yeah, just yeah. in a few weeks. Yeah. Uh, and this was designed in collaboration with uh, Gore-Tec. Uh, yeah, Gore-Tec yeah. is a Chinese OEM, and they have the expertise in the plastic and making uh, yeah, the optics and things. That, you know, we're, so it looks like a commercial product, uh, yeah. and that's important. We want to show our customers that it's very nearly ready for commercial. Oh, but, you know, again, it is a reference design. Yes. We'll provide just the circuitry, uh, we'll provide the schematics and the bill of materials, or we'll provide the whole thing if you want but to just slap you, your logo you, on it and go to market. Also, but you also deliver an SDK or something? Yeah. Like, like for the, the positional the, tracking or for, for sure, sure. the uh, forward range or for the right. eye tracking, you need to have an SDK. Absolutely. Well. The Snapdragon SDK for VR is already available. Yes. That's what's being used in the Gear 7. That's yes. what's being used in things like Pico VR. 820 based device where the 820 lives inside the game control. Oh, okay. So it's just a different design criteria. So the headset, the HMB is quite lightweight. Yeah. Uh, because it's screens. Yeah, so battery and everything is in here. Uh, so this is available in China today. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, this is a little bit the market in China is very fragmented, very many different players. Mm -hmm. uh, because they don't have Google services, because they don't have uh, Facebook services, the content delivery platform is very different. Everybody's going a different way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it's a challenge. And reference design means that anyone can build this a similar design and you supply the parts? Or what does it we, mean? We basically, we pro provide the design to help yeah. you get started. Yeah. Whether it's a circuit board or the schematics or you know whatever you need. Okay. Of course, it's based on our chip. So ultimately, yeah. you buy our chip, that's where okay. we make our money. I yes. see. And I, we need the display, right? Yeah, and you know you can source a different display. We use a particular one that's in here, but displays will change over time, and you may choose to use a different one. Yeah. An example is controllers. We, we didn't build a controller for this. Control mm -hmm. human interface is one of the big challenges in VR. Yes. What's the right thing? Yeah. So, you know, gestures are cool. Okay, I've got cameras; they can handle gestures, yes. but gestures don't do triggering events very yeah. well. So, you know, maybe it's a, a Bluetooth-enabled ring. 
Uh, maybe it's Wi-Fi controllers. Maybe yeah, it's something else. You know, who knows? I don't know what the right answer is. So we have all the capabilities in terms of Wi-Fi uh, for both content delivery and for controllers, Bluetooth, Bluetooth VLE, Bluetooth 4.0, Bluetooth Smart, whatever it is, you know, this, this platform can help you. And of course, we make the chips that also provide the Bluetooth in the controllers uh, or the Wi-Fi in the router or... Yeah. And the sensors for movement and uh, the sensors, lat latency? We, have, we don't make sensors. Okay. Uh, we provide the sensor algorithms. The sensors, and it's an important thing to note actually, the, the, even the six degrees of freedom runs entirely on our DSP. Mm. So when we're doing all of this tracking motion so forth, we're not taking any of the horsepower away from the GPU or the CPU. They're mm. not so being used. So all custom chips are more dedicated yeah. uh, well, circuits. Every yeah. one of the Snapdragon processors is a system on a chip. Mm -hmm. So they are a CPU, a GPU, a DSP, a display engine, a uh, video engine, a camera yeah. image signal processor. Yeah. All of these work together as a heterogeneous computing engine that allow us to do these things you know, and balance the resources. Yeah. In this case, we're going to use that DSP to handle all of the motion tracking and the sensor tracking mm -hmm. so that the GPU can do the, what is normally the bottleneck in any you know, yeah. G, you know, graphics application. Yes, so. yes, yes. And coming back to the eye tracking, uh, mm -hmm. is this just uh, infrared light inside, and then well, you know there, you there are there are two cameras inside, and there are infrared emitters in yeah. order to so get you track the pupils. It's it, kind of everybody does the same idea. Yeah. So, yeah. So and we are working with a partner on the eye tracking, and I can't tell you who it is. So far, it's well, at okay. a later date, when I actually <laughs> want to save that because I I don't have a foveated rendering demo, and when I do have that demo, that's yes. the time to talk about eye tracking. But until then, it's kind of like, well, you're talking about nothing. But the, the, the device is, uh, in your opinion, capable. Absolutely. Absolutely. Hardware is there in both, both the GPU and also yeah. in the software algorithms for eye tracking. Just haven't put all the pieces together. This is new for us, too. We, we too, need this platform yes. to do our SDK development. Yeah, sure, know. sure. Okay. And I also read about hand tracking. Is that... Uh, also already uh, we, there, you know, or we have some libraries for gesture recognition yeah. already, even for hand for uh, phones. Yeah. Uh, you see some phones out there where you can wave at it to tell it to stop ringing, or different yeah, yeah. different gestures that use the front facing camera. But there's not a skeleton of a hand there, or something. There's not a skeleton. Hand. There's, you yeah, can use yeah. that second camera anytime with the gesture library to bring yeah. the hands into the, into the world. Uh, okay. We can do the background subtraction so that all you see is the hands, and you know, that that's all libraries that exist. Yeah. Okay. Great. Right. And you did the design for the Gear VR 2? Uh, we worked closely with them on that because it, it, even in the first version of the Gear VR was, was based on a Snapdragon processor. Uh, it was first supported on the, Adreno, on the Adreno GPU where most of the drivers were developed. And Galaxy S7 and Galaxy Note are based on Snapdragon. So. Yeah, great. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, guys.